mornings. Good morning. Thank you so much for joining us today. It's a new month, the month of June. Mwake mifika katikati and I hope you're very happy and very excited. Here at Hope Church Lovington, we want to welcome you and we really thank God that you've been able to be with us throughout uh, our broadcast uh, for the last about 10 weeks, I think. Yeah, 10 weeks, I think. Yeah, so we thank God uh, that he's kept us this far. So I don't want to talk too much. I want us to get ready for our service and I hope you're already ready and also sitting room umesukuma sukuma viti kidogo and the chairs are not there the table is not there let me read for us a verse as we get ready to praise the Lord I'm reading from Psalm chapter 100 Make a joyful noise to the Lord all the earth serve the Lord with gladness come into his presence with singing know that the Lord is good he is God. It is He who made us. We are His. We are His people and the sheep of His pasture. Enter His gates with thanksgiving and His courts with praise. Give thanks to Him and bless His name. For the Lord is good. His love endures forever and His faithfulness to all generations. So this is a time to praise and worship the Lord, and I want you to do that with all your heart. Now, see Kuena Haya, Sawa Sawa, enjoy, jump, sing, just make a joyful noise to the Lord because He's good and His love endures forever. So, have a wonderful praise and worship session and a wonderful service this day. God bless you. God is good. God is good, boys and girls. So let us stand up on our feet. We clap.
of worship and I'm going to call Granis to lead us in time of worship. So let us close our eyes as we say Bwana ni nuru yangu. Yeah, thank you for what is doing it online.
God, boys and girls. It is a new month that the Lord has given to us and we are so grateful for the opportunity to be able to continue sharing the word of God together. Amen. My name is Teacher Mili and I'll be taking you through our lesson today. So last month we were doing a theme on one another. So this is a new month. So we are starting our new month with a theme on giving. So when you think of giving, what comes to your mind, boys and girls? Okay, I will give you a definition of giving. Giving can be to assist, being generous, or represent something willingly without wanting anything in return. So I want to show you some few pictures. Have you ever found yourself in a situation like this? You don't want to share your ice cream or something that you are eating. You don't want to share your toy. So you are fighting over it. You don't want to be the giver and all that. And have you also found yourself in a situation like this? Where you just want to give to someone and be generous and give without expecting anything in return. Isn't it an awesome feeling? So today we want to just go through the story of giving and see where it actually started from. Giving started with God. God himself is the initiator of giving. Way back before the creation of the earth, the book of Genesis 1, 1 tells us that in the beginning, there was nothing. But God saw it best that he began by giving us a place to live in. That is the earth. That is where we are dwelling right now. So giving actually started from God. And the best part about giving when it comes to God is found in John 3.16, which we all know that says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. So when you think about giving, remember that God is the first person that gave. So we are just doing what he taught us to do. And so... When it comes to giving, we have two rules. Number one, the first giving is the giving of ourselves to God. If you are thinking of giving and you've not given yourself to God, something is very wrong. In the book of 2 Corinthians 8, 5, it says, And not only as we had hoped, but they first gave themselves to the Lord and then to us by the will of God. So, before you even start giving, you need to Surrender your heart to the Lord, the giver of life. And then from there now, you'll be able to connect with giving even to others. The second rule about giving is there must be a giver and there must be a receiver. A giver is the one who gives and a receiver is the one who receives. So when you are a giver, okay, just hold your fist like this and hold them very tightly. Hold them tightly tightly you know if you hold it for so long you start getting tired because uh, your muscles are being stretched and all that so if you are a giver your hands cannot be like this so if you are a giver if you are a receiver you have to open your hands to receive and if you are a if you are a giver you have to stretch your hands to give just as the picture there shows us so there has to be pe two people a giver and a receiver for giving to take place. Now we want to see what is the importance of giving. Where are we even telling you about giving? You might be wondering. So number one, giving is a requirement from God. In the book of Malachi chapter 3 verse 10 it says, bring all the tithes in the storehouse that, they may, that there may be food in my house and try me now in this, says the Lord of hosts, if I will not open for you the windows of heaven and pour out for you such blessing that there will be room enough to receive it. So here we see God requires us to be able to give to the house of the Lord. You know, our God is so rich. If you read the book of Psalms 50:10, it actually says that on a thousand hills, God owns cattle. So you see how rich God is. So you might wonder, why does he want us to give if he's so rich? God requires us to give because everything that we have belongs to God. You know this song that says, 
I will praise the Lord with all my heart, with all my soul. I will thank you, Lord. I will thank you, Lord. A joyful song He has given me. He has given me, and the mother that you have, He has given you. He has given you, and the church that you have, He has given you. He has given you so God has given you everything so he just he has loaned us our parents our friends so he just requires us to be able to just give him back and when we do that we express our love our worship our faith and obedience in his word so we give number one because God requires us to give number two we give because giving helps to assist God's work and to help others you know when you come to church we have chairs, we have, you know, all these things that we see. It is what we give that actually helps us to, to serve, to do what we have to do. So we give because it helps us to assist God's work, whichever work. We have missionaries that need to be supported. We have giving, we have to buy church equipment and all that. And also to help others, our friends who do not have we are required of God to be able to give unto them. The, th the other thing is giving is saving for life. When you have money, you can do three things with it. You can either spend it, you can either put it in your pocket, and you can also save it. So I'll give you a small story. When I was in class eight, we used to look forward to closing days. You know that day when you close school and you just have some money to buy snacks as you welcome the holidays. So I used to save money and save money and give my mom to keep it for me until closing day so when closing day comes i tell her mom i need my money so that i can be able to buy snacks and she tells me actually i was i i used it to buy food for you so you eat here you eat lunch you eat supper so that is how your money was spent and it really made me sad i went to that school that day closing day i had nothing so i was just watching other kids buying their stuff their snacks and it really broke my heart you know but that is not how god works actually proverbs 19:17 says he who has pity on the poor lends to the lord and he will pay back what he has given so giving is saving for life because it is like you are lending to God. So when you lend to God, you know, when God keeps money for you, it is in a very safe place. And you cannot outgive God. If you go into a competition between you and God who can give more, you can never outgive God because He's the giver of everything. And in Luke 6 38, there's a song that says, we, we, we do it in a song. It says, Give and it will come back to you. Good measure, press down, shaken together and running over. Give and it will come back to you. When you give, you give to the Lord. So you know you are giving to God and it will come back to you. The same measure that you give. If you give small, it gives you small. If you give big, it gives you big. If you give bigger he gives you bigger so it just depends on how much you want to give to you and then giving makes you responsible now that you know how to give it gives you an opportunity to be responsible you become sensitive you now start taking care of your shoes because you know there's someone somewhere who doesn't have those shoes you start taking care of the food you eat and throw away you now start eating you know saving you know eat what you can and keeping this other because now you know there's someone somewhere who doesn't have if it is snack start eating knowing you have a friend in school who doesn't have or in church and so it teaches you to be responsible so when you become responsible you become a good steward the other thing that really uh, makes me happy is giving makes the impossible possible that one is in Matthew 14 14 to 21. I'll add you to go and read that portion of scripture. It is about the boy and the few loaves that fed 5,000 people. Who could have imagined that by just giving that small uh, few fishes and loaves that 5,000 people could have been fed? So feeding can make the impossible to be possible. The last one, giving makes you happy. It has to make you happy. If you are giving and you are not happy, then something is very wrong because if you read the book of 2 Corinthians chapter 9 verse 7 
it actually tells us that we need to so let each one of us give us he purposes in his heart to give not grudgingly you know grudgingly is you know let me just show you some pictures of what grudgingly actually means if you are a giver and this is you then something is very wrong with you which one are you are you do you give grudgingly like in the pictures or this other part which says we need to give cheerfully just watch and see which one are you in all these pictures that you are displaying yeah which one are you do you give cheerfully do you give grudgingly so that is how our hearts actually look from the inside when we give so now to our memory verse in that same part of giving grudgingly and cheerfully we'll just do the cheerful part because this is the part that actually excites me second corinthians chapter 9 verse 7b it says god loves a cheerful giver can you repeat after me god loves a cheerful giver god loves a cheerful giver so when you give remember cheerful remember that face when you give that is how god wants you with a smile you know with so much pride in your heart that you're giving to the lord and giving to his work and god is going to help you in everything that you do and now to the assignment i know you are at home and the teachers are giving you lots of homework to do maths english and all that but my assignment is very it has no calculations it has no a b c d's so you'll just have to look for a plain paper like this and then you are going to scribble those coins you know the coins you have 5 10 20 and if you are lucky to find a 40 40 shillings coin in this corona pandemic it is also a good thing to do so you'll just go and scribble like in the picture and be able to do the pattern and make sure that you put a smiley of someone who's smiling it has to be a cheerful face so that drawing has to be of someone who is cheerful okay so that come that we, we come to the end of our lesson so parents thank you so much for enabling your children to be able to see this uh this lesson for today i pray that you may continue to help them in everything they do and let me just pray and then you may be able to watch a clip for you parents thank you god for today thank you for the lesson lord i pray that you may all help us to be cheerful givers and not to give grudgingly god we thank you for today thank you for your blessings which are never ending in jesus name we pray and believe amen god bless you boys and girls come to you today to speak to you about how you can reach your children even in these times when they are at home i want to start by reading for us deuteronomy chapter 6 from verse 6 which says these commandments that i give you today are to be upon your hearts impress them on your children talk about them when you sit at home when you lie down when you, and when you get up tie them as symbols on your hands and bind them on your foreheads write them on the door frames of your houses and your gates this is Moses speaking to the children of Israel and gi- giving them commands and decrees that the Lord had um, spoken to him about so that when they crossed over to the promised land they would not forget who had brought them um, to where they were so that they would not forget So the mandate of raising children to know the Lord even in these times when schools are closed when churches are closed is squarely on the parents not just now but always it's squarely on us as parents to raise our children fast so what do we do in these times when we cannot um rely on the ways that we are used to for our children to hear the word of God does it mean that they will not be reached does it mean that um we have to wait until the church is opened again does it mean that we have to wait until schools resume my suggestion is that no our the mandate is on us as parents and guardians to be able to teach the word of god to these parents so that we do not raise a generation of children who do not know god or who forget that it is the lord that is in charge of everything So um four quick ways that I can think of that we can use to reach our children they need to see you as parents praying and reading the word of God um have a family devotional time time of devotion in the evening where you read a short scripture do a short devotion and pray together 
and people can take turns in praying however short the prayers are even if it's two sentences for each child find out how your children are doing every day let them express the emotions that they feel right now many of them are feeling frustrated they're feeling angry they're feeling hopeless it is a time to teach them uh, what god says about situations like this through his word the other thing we can do is look for teachable moments in our days whether you're in the kitchen um walking on the street taking a walk there's always something you can tell a child about god through the experiences of your day whether they, they, when 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 uh, they see the news and everything you can always bring them back to um, the hope that is in god so let's not despair let's not feel as if there are no um there's nothing that we can do to our children the word of god is rich we have time right now we have the gift of time we can sit down with our children we can pray with them we can pray for them we can teach them to pray we can teach them to focus on god thank you very much and may the lord bless each one of you parents amen